This episode is presented by Destination New South Wales. Start planning your next New South Wales holiday now. Previously on Rivals, we saw a hi-fi clinic from the cool and gather prince Josh Kerr of D-Bar. Nathan Hogg-Hedge returned from the surfing wilderness to go absolutely mad on his beloved North Narrabeen lefts. And Jay Bottle Thompson narrowly avoided a nuclear meltdown at Mindless Burley. The fifth competitor in the Rivals series is the Yamina grinder, Glenn Micro Hall. Better known these days as surfing's premier super coach, Micro oversees a stable of talent that includes women's world champ Tyler Wright and her world title contending brother, Owen. Micro was also a top flight surfer in his day, spending the better part of a decade slogging it out on the notoriously difficult world qualifying series before eventually getting his start on the world tour at the ripe old age of 31. A renowned strategist and master of maximising any surfer's talent, including his own, he's chosen the shifting peaks and point break of Avoca Beach on the New South Wales Central Coast for his heat. I'm on Vegemite. <laughs> Yeah, we're just at a Voca and there's a there's a few good banks, so it's not um it's nothing special, it's nothing all the time, but there's definitely something to get a few waves and hopefully at least finish a couple so I can hold my own against some of the guys, but it's um no it's it's a bit of swell and it's offshore and it's clean enough, so we'll be right. And the toast is my surfs are normally about quantity, not quality. I just have a short surf and get as many ways as I can for a bit of exercise. And um, so surfing for two hours, I need to pace myself. You see that big left leg a second ago? Yeah, we're definitely either our zone at the lake there or this right. I don't think it's worth going anywhere else. Tyler's ringing to see what the plan is, and I just put it on the phone to the commissioner. You know, my theory is all events are the same and you want to, you know, and surf relaxed and comfortable and you do control what you can control and surf your best, but this is a bit of a different theory, I guess, with the two-hour heat and got crowds and whatever, so Tyler's going to come down and hang out and watch, I think, and... Yes, yeah, coming down in 10 minutes. She's coming down? All right. I'll, I might go roll reverse and she can be the, she can be the coach and see what she, see what she gives me. I haven't surfed a heat since I retired and it's an exciting opportunity to, to go and test your, your old competitor skills and, and see how we go with um, you know, a little time frame. It's two hours, so it's a bit different to a normal heat, but it's an exciting opportunity to see if you can still put a couple of turns together. Glenn Micro Hall, he's still surfing sick. Like, I think when you're living and breathing it's still, like, you're not surfing as much, but you're kind of you're looking at new ways to surf, so Marco could be an underdog in it. Strategy, he's the master, you know, he's gonna be like, yeah, he'll be tough to beat. He's got so many different slabs and setups, like, he's gonna get sick waves. Yeah, he wouldn't want to be, you know, underestimate Marco. I heard he's gonna get his mini little frame into a couple little cabins at his little secret spot down there. I think he should have his at U minor though. I don't know where he's gonna do it. U minor's a bit of a fat piece of crap. I didn't say that, no. <laughs> It's going to be pretty hard, but I'm just going to do my thing and do my best and try and put a couple of waves together and have fun and just enjoy the little opportunity to test those skills again. The New South Wales Central Coast has long been an underground hub of Australian talent, producing everything from big wave maniacs such as Ross Clark Jones and Justin Jughead Allport to well-rounded world tour talents, Ace Buckin, Matt Wilkinson and Wade Carmichael. I actually grew up in your minor, which is um, yeah, 15, 20 minutes from here, and, and I was so well supported down there from the local crew, and it was almost like the perfect transition, because down there's soft, rolly waves that are kind of easy, and there's little rip bowl gutters, and then there's a long secret wave at the other end, and, <laughs> and then there's a slabby point, so, and then as I got older and I, I came up here, it was almost the perfect transition to, to learn to surf in 
ways are a little bit easier and then as I kind of developed, you know, and move up to a Boca and up here there's, you know, an amazing bunch of surfers from um, Ace and Wade and, um, and then some juniors that, um, with Caleb and Lennox and, and Macy when she was here and yeah, it's just such a healthy, active outdoor um, lifestyle that's super encouraging and I think that's a really healthy environment to be in. Boasting a wide array of point breaks, beach breaks and heart in mouth slabbing reef breaks, the Central Coast tests a surfer's ability in every way. With a point break at one end and a consistent beach break running up to the other, Micro's new home among the silver spooners at Avoca is as dependable for waves as it gets. A renowned beach break specialist, Micro might have surfed more heat than any other surfer in the Rivals series. After a gruelling 10 years on the World Qualifying Series, Micro finally made it to the Major League, only to break his back in a horrific wipeout at Fiji, just three events into his World Tour career. I was in that kind of grey area of like, all right, do you try and come back, or do you just hang it up now? I'm already getting old, and it's... It was a lot of learning through that whole experience, and it was um, definitely one of those situations where I look back now, and it's 100% shaped kind of who I am now, so it's, it's all one of those moments where you realise you know, through adversity, you'll learn the most. After the break, we find out more about Micro and his world-beating surf academy. We're living in the present, but dreaming of the future. You've dreamed of places you'll go. New adventures. Space. So, you can't travel the world right now. So what? New South Wales is here for you. The time's coming when we'll all reboot 2020. One unforgettable experience at a time. Until then, love New South Wales from home. For Micro, the transition from world to a competitor to world-class coach was seamless. The endless gamesmanship, strategizing and mental fortitude forged in what was one of the longest WQS careers in history has become the hallmark of his career after professional surfing as surfing's number one coach. I had an ankle injury one, one year on the QS and then I was out of the water for like, I think it was maybe six or seven months and I did some coaching with some local kids here and, and just up the coast and I was working with them and, and none, of them, none of those kids were really well beaters at all but they were like you know enthusiastic and they were good kids and I was really enjoying kind of doing my little session in the afternoons and going down there and hanging out with them and and then one of the dads actually hit me up and he's like alright is my kid gonna make it and I was like almost froze I was like can't lie to this guy and so yeah and I was like He's got a long way to go, but obviously there's there's hope for everyone, but I'm not going to tell you that, yeah, he'll make it. All the parents were like, nah, hey, we don't care how good they are. We're stoked that they're not at the shopping mall after school and they're around someone who's kind of healthy and positive and, and encouraging them to be in the water. And then ever since that day, I kind of like, I appreciated that that's, that's more about mentoring than coaching. I really think the foundation is to create good, happy, healthy people and, you know, and I want to see them do well in the events, but I want to see them you know, do well in life even more. I think the best thing about Glenn's coaching is he truly believes in balance and he understands like, what we go through in life and he gets that surfing isn't everything and there's a whole nother, like surfing's one part of it, but then there's so many more like aspects that we deal with in day-to-day -day life and all things like that. So he's very understanding and he encourages in whatever we want to do. Yes! What? I think what he really opened the door for me was, yeah, just a whole different way to compete. He, I think he engaged parts of my brain that were untapped. He won't ask me to want to win because he knows at the end of the day I'm not there because that's what I want to do. I'm there to do a job and, you know, keeping that job in mind, it's to win heats and obviously to win world titles. <laughs> the first year Glenn came on, I was in seven out of 10 finals and converted five out of those seven. I was just saying that I've never scored 
over a 7.5 on my back end and I just got an 8.83, which is 0.2 off a 9, which is pretty impressive, which is only <laughs> one point off a 10. So just think of it that way. I can't really break down four years' worth of work, but <laughs> he br brings a lot. You're telling me that I just have to do this and not all of this. He's like, yeah, you just do that. And I'm like, all right, I'll just do that. And that's what you really saw in the first year um, in 2016. If everything over here is taken care of with the, you know, in the balance of life and if their well-being's good and their relationships are good, and that to me is more of a celebration at the end of the year, that you've had a great year and we've all had a good time and we're all alive and well and healthy and, you know, and the families are doing well and, and the results match up alongside that, then that to me is a really successful year. With four to six foot of swell running, Micro's decided to pull the trigger at Evoca Point, a long sand bottom wave offering up multiple turn sections. When it's in your local area, you should know where the banks are, and in saying that, I don't venture too far. If it's a, I'm more hunting out little one foot long waves for the kids. I've only got a 20 in the car at the moment. I'm probably going to borrow a board off Tyler, so I'm already underprepared. <laughs> I haven't ticked the preparation box already, so that's a failure. Got a few blockers coming. We'll see if they actually really do block though, but Tyler and Ace and Molly, I've brought them in, paid them big bucks to try and block for me, but I bet you they don't. They'll, they'll block and then just cut me off, I guarantee it. He's a little bit unprepared, but <laughs> I might go roll reverse and she can be the coach and see what she see what she gives me. I'm not a hassle of him. <laughs> <laughs> try and keep it consistent. That's what he'd tell me. Don't go peak at the start, he'd try and keep it like this. So let's see. I hope he leads by example. Let's just hope that. After the break, Micro puts his backhand to work on the point. We're living in the present, but dreaming of the future. You've dreamed of places you'll go. New adventures. Space. So you can't travel the world right now. So what? New South Wales is here for you. The time's coming when we'll all reboot 2020. One unforgettable experience at a time. Until then, love New South Wales from home. Evoca Beach is a shimmering kernel of gold in the bubbling cauldron of goodness that is the New South Wales Central Coast. Just an hour drive north of Sydney, the area has produced countless world-class surfers and world tour competitors, from Ross Clark Jones to Ace Buchan, Matt Wilkinson and Wade Carmichael. The area is a melting pot of prehistoric riverways, untouched national parks, pumping beach breaks, cosmopolitan cafes, and even a sprinkling of world-class, working-class rugby league. I know where I'll be going on my next holiday. Pack your bags and get up the sunny coast. Welcome back to Rivals. Micro's on the sand and sizing up the conditions. What do you think Dad should do? Should he go out now? He'll be judged on his best three waves. And don't forget, you decide. Head over to mysurf.tv to rate his rides. When you sign up for any competition as a surfer, you, you're never guaranteed certain type of waves. So that's probably, you know, and you've got to be resilient and be open-minded and adaptable to, to what waves you end up getting and, you know, what tide it is and what type of board you're going to ride. And the competitor in you clicks in a gear and kind of make do with whatever you got. He's got women's world champ Tyler Wright in his corner and it looks like he's even poached one of the sticks. Hopefully that winning feeling is infectious and Micro can blow the back out of a couple at Evoca Point. Here he goes, opening up a bit of a Bondi bounce. Half off the top. And he's racing down the line, looking for one last closeout belt. Winds up and schwack. Nice little close out here, nice opener for the Uminer Battler. Well, it looks like Micro's jagged us out from outside here. Jamming off the bottom, big carve out of the top, bit of a flat section. Oh, that was a nice tag in the pocket. 
And he goes Tyler Wright winding up the big bottom turn into a hack out of the top. Apparently she's even working as a blocker, keeping a few of the lopes off the sets. Marco, oh, drop ball at Hack, you kidding me? That was mental. Hark's in the pit. Doggy door exits. That was sick. Ah. This little thing, bonusy on the inside. Ow. Could, uh, that could go into his top three. Here he goes, Mike, on the backside now. Loosening the fins out of the top. Off the right board. Looking very smooth under his feet. And the surgeon, little cameo from the world to a veteran, ain't sparking down the beach. Darts going close to noon o'clock there. Oh, Mike on a bomb. Oh my lord, that was a mega float. Are you kidding me? This thing, oh, pure commitment. Wow, he's not gonna age well if he keeps doing turns like that, old micro. Yeah. Looks like he's popped his leggy and maybe even his board. Yeah, time out. Lucky he's got Tyler's quiver to dip into. <laughs> I didn't think I was making it. Surely it's a four. <laughs> Micro's got a fresh leggy and he's back at the point. Here he goes off the bottom. Zah, working hard on that turn. See if you can get a bit more purchase on the next one. Oots. He goes off the bottom. Oots. More vert on that one. He's going down a hill. He's going off piste. Bit of a frothy monster. Oh, hard yakka. All those years on the QS paying off for the Minder Grinder. Off the bottom, huge hit out of the top. Can't stick it. Oh, that would have been a mental turn. Oh, looks like he's changed boards with Tyler Wright. See if it works. Ooh, big gaff out of the top. Winding up off the bottom and darts. That was a critical hit in the pocket. Oh, another big Rio. What's he got for us on the end? Woohoo! A little hit to spin. No completion. Still pretty sick surfing. But uh, hucking it up there. He's jamming off the bottom on this one. Straight into the roof. Another frothy one on the inside. He likes his waves like he likes his coffee. Plenty of milk and lots of froth. And now we're down and Micro's putting on a show. After the break, we find out whether he's gonna have a go. We're living in the present, the dreaming of the future. You've dreamed of places you'll go, new adventures, Space. So, you can't travel the world right now. So what? New South Wales is here for you. The time's coming when we'll all reboot 2020. One unforgettable experience at a time. Until then, love New South Wales from home. Here's what Micro's shown us so far. Big backside Rio. Pretty much every kind of backside turn you can think of. Sick little inside tube and a couple of frothy monsters. Still poking the nose out. It's been a solid showing so far. Oh, look at this. Micro's on an absolute bomb here. This thing's mega. Oh, unlucky to the local lad inside. Micro belts it. That was huge. What's he got for us on the inside? Rinses the corn and successfully exits the tube. That first turn though, that thing was sick on a big section too. And here's the tube, just rinsing that corn sparkly. Here's the drone angle, big blast out of the top. That was sick, sets up the inside tube section. A little bit of spit on the exit. That was a stoinker. Here he goes off the top and just throws the kitchen sink at it. Oh, I can't stick it. That would have been the turn of the heat so far. He's got a bit of a pep in his step, the minor grinder. With just 10 minutes on the clock. Micro is getting close to the end of his heat. We'll see what he's got. Oh, that was another pretty sick turn. 
And here he goes, a deep bottom turn and another vertical backside belt. Following it up with a nice slashing manoeuvre. Oh, here we go. This is a great angle from the water. This will show what these guys are capable of. Here he goes and darts straight in the pocket. That was massive. Follows it up with a nice little hit. What's he got for us on the end section? Oh, little cheese whiz down the double up. Well played. Gas, mate. Fun tank. That was fun. I haven't surfed that long for a long time. That's a wrap for Micro. Quality conditions with mostly big overhead rights, and the minor pocket rocket managed to pick the eyes out of it and put on a solid showing. These are Micro's top three. Get the pen and pad ready. Big backside hit. That was huge. Sets up for an inside tube, drags the corn, and smoothly exits. And this one, from the water angle, winding up and darts, jamming it in the pocket. Oh, sick vertical Rio on a hollow cupped out section. Another big snap. And on the end section, a sneaky, delectable little cheese whiz. Well played, Micro. Wave number three, big bottom turn, vertical backside hit, bit of a frothy one, but he still manages a sick, smooth carve through the turbulence, and a final snap. Doing all these types of things is actually good for the coaching role, I reckon. It reminds you of whether it's overthinking or nerves or how to deal with all those types of things. Yeah, it comes around and helps, helps me as a coach, for sure. I'm just stoked that I didn't farm every wave at this old age. <laughs> what does the future hold for Glen Micro Hall? I will keep coaching for a little bit and as long as my family and my kids are happy, that's that's the main point. And yeah, we'll see where the wind blows us. But I'm, I'm really enjoying the learning part of, of my job. I've, I'm always trying to better myself and better my skills to, to be a better coach. And, and that's kind of chewing up my time. And between that and taking the kids doing whatever they want to do, that's, that's my time at the moment. And then see where we end up. Stay tuned for next week when Denny Wills heads home to Broken Head.